Hey, I'm RT and welcome back to RT's world. So today I present you something new. And this behind me is a scoreboard and this is 100% customizable, 100% uh, stackable, scalable, whatsoever. You can build it as you like and I will show you how to do it afterwards. But first of all, let me explain. We have here a scoreboard that you can use, for example, if you're a casino owner, you can use it for casinos. If you are not into gambling, if you are maybe like into farming beacons or stuff like this, you can track how many beacons this person has, etc. You can do whatever you want. It's just a scoreboard with points. You can subtract, subtract you can add and you can clear it. And you can also determine a winner 100% of the time reliably. And yeah, that's what it can do. And in this video, I will show you in the first part how to build it. Uh, basically explain every single uh, circuit. And in the second part, we will build it together block by block. So you can have it in your single player or survival uh, or multiplayer Minecraft world. That's what I wanted to say. And I also got Optifine back. So I can now zoom again to you if I'm speaking. So, and before we go into the comment for this video, since it was uh, suggested by a Patreon of mine, uh, I want to celebrate a little bit. We have now three Patreons here at RT's World, so yay, <laughs> celebrations again. So three Patreons, thanks so much for all of you guys. Really much appreciated. So honestly, I really, really appreciate it. Yay, small interruptions time. Um, <laughs> I just thanked all the Patreons and of course, I also thank all the guys and all the, what, all the viewers on YouTube. Really appreciate the support. And of course, I also read all your comments. I try to answer them as fast as possible. And if you have some crazy or some wild casino machine ideas, make sure to write a comment. Not only if you're a frequent commenter's channel, also if you are new and don't write comments, just write one. I will try my best to build it and I will have a lot of fun and hopefully you as well if you watch it. So let's continue on with the video. So, um, and now that brings me to the comment for today's video. The suggester is Tristan and he said, uh, great little game. I had an idea, a redstone and detailed scoreboard that could be used for lots of various things. The point can be added manually and automatically, plus it can be for three players up to 10 plus. Not sure of the visuals of it. Obvious version basically would be lamps, of course, but maybe a more original way. I believe you'll be more able to build the best scoreboard than me. You will find the answers, haha. <laughs> and I think Tristan, I accomplished your challenge and made a very scalable, nice version of a scoreboard. So let's dive into it. Uh, first of all, I made, of course, a version with lamps. And of course, I made like a single module so you can uh, you know how to stack them. And I also made a version with blocks. So it's a little bit different from the visual side. You have like blocks popping out and not uh, like lamps. And yeah, basically you just press your buttons and that adds some blocks to the scoreboard. And as you can see here, for example, if we go two times here, for example, we can generate like a winning sound or stuff like this. The 15th point will be on top and it will be indicated with the sound. So uh, yeah, that's basically the things you can do with the score with the um, visuals, but I will focus on the redstone lamp one since it's a little bit com more compact and you can build it if you want to with the blocks as well. There's a world download link in the video description, like in all of my videos, so you can play around with it and look how it's built. It's basically just replacing the lamps with pistons and some blocks in front. So, but what can this machine really do? Of course, we have here the, the very complex version and I will show you uh, just very quickly in a second how they all play out. I have here for the preview, you saw it, I have this automatically generated um, yeah, input where I just can film it. So just push this lever here, this lever here and let's go to the front and let's see what happens. So we get here a lot of yeah, lamps lighting up in different speeds and why they light up in different speeds is just because I just programmed here five different uh, speed based clocks so they all run at a certain pulse length and that's why we get some of the um, basically scoreboards fill faster than others so now I can turn it off and of course I can yeah now two players already won and now I can of course like subtract some lamps as you can see here just showcasing a little bit it will take some time the, the higher you get on the scoreboard and I can also add some points as you can see here. Let's add a point. Yeah. And you can also manually clear some of them. So just clear them out with the black button on the, t on the bottom and you just uh, remove all the scoreboard 
from the player. And here I just created an end gate so I can clear out all the lamps at once. Looks very nice visually. <laughs> it even looks a little bit nicer. Let's do it just for demonstration purposes for this one here. It looks even better for that one. Let's try it. Did I mention that it is advantageous for redstone contraptions if they are connected? <laughs> I don't know how I messed up this one, but obviously I did not remove <laughs> the blocks here. So once more, let's look at the retraction. It looks very satisfying. Really like that. So um, with that of the w out of the way, let's focus on one single module. Since the module itself is already complicated enough, we don't have to look at a whole array of them. And as you may expect, you can stack an infinite amount of them, like top, vertically, horizontally, it doesn't matter. You can stack them as you wish. And that makes them very nice for uh, multiplayer. And you can also put the player heads next, like where I have the mob heads. Looks also very nice if you are in multiplayer. So what do we have here? We have three different inputs into this machine. We have add, subtract, and reset. So the add line just goes here yellow, the subtract line is orange and the reset line is this uh, magenta wool. And the heart of this machine is here this um, pulse memory cell or it's redstone signal strength memory cell. That's the correct uh, description of it. So as we press the add button and I can just simulate it by pressing here this yellow one, we get signal strength one right here and we just transfer the signal strength here and this lime circuit just basically in combination with the light blue one it just delivers the signal upwards and just lights the lamps as the signal strength increases so i won't go over too many details here but as you increase the signal strength more and more of these repeaters will turn on so that was the second one that was the third one you get the idea and basically we light the lamps always in this um rectangular fashion like always the bot left bottom lamp then the upper one go to the right and then to bottom again that's how we light them and that we do that just spiraling upwards and the 15th lamp of course that's why there's a limit on 15 lamps is the signal strength limit and that's why it's 15 lamps we could of course use two of those like if we have signal strength 15 and get another pulse we can add another cell and go to 30 but uh, i just limited it 15 here you can do that as you like you can also add two modules together to get to 30 points it doesn't matter you can completely customize that and if you need less than 50 points yeah just don't build it as high just like clear it out at at eight or top it off at eight so um, but how does the system work? Tristan specifically asked me for adding manual points and also automatic points. That's why we have this interface here on the front and also an interface right here on the back. As you can see here, we could just add here one point. And as you can see, it works. But we could also add like two points with one click. And we get two points. And now you may ask, Okay, what if the person on the front directly in the same moment or simultaneously presses the button compared to the person or basically the machine on the back? Wouldn't the system only detect it as one single input and therefore mess up your score? The answer is a clear no. It wouldn't be messed up. Since we use here a very nice trick of counting like direct items and transferring them into signal strength. So we have here this dropper. And by manually uh, triggering it, we have here this uh, blue wool, doesn't matter what's in there. So at least if it's stackable, so you can put a lot of items in, it will be transferred in here. This is a self-emptying circuit and it will just deliver per item one pulse to the system and therefore to the pulse memory or to the signal strength memory cell. And here in the back, you can see it. If we do the two points, we just power two of them and yeah, you can do three points, four points whatsoever. But um, long story short, if we, for example, how many points are here left? We have now four, seven. So we can do another seven without triggering the win. So if we put like seven items just into this dropper here, we can see that we just increase the signal strength by seven. And that's the magic behind this system. It just counts items. It's completely 100% reliable all the time, single player and multiplayer, doesn't matter. And we have the same circuit, of course, here in orange. So you can imagine that was the adding circuit. And we have the subtracting circuit that also interacts with this uh, signal strength memory cell, but on a different input. So that's the, the yellow input is just here, this block. 
the blue one basically and for the orange one it's just from beneath let's see if it, we can go there it's just this torch here and same mechanism if you want to buy a machine automatically decrease it the uh, scoreboard by one point we can add it from behind like with the yellow circuits and if we put in for example now like 10 or so items into this dropper it will decrease the signal strength by 10 and since we had 14 four lamps should be left afterwards so that's how the system works it's completely reliable you can press at the front and the back basically simultaneously and it will get counted as uh, different outputs uh, different inputs and therefore will be processed correctly and yeah here i just made a small mistake i just power here the same dropper so if we would power them simultaneously in this case it would mess with the system but you get the idea you just um, have to put it right here put here another hopper so minor fix here at this point just do it like this and yeah no, don't write the sign but you get the idea you have to have two different uh, hopper lines facing into the main dropper to get this um, non-dependency of the circuit so and that leaves me just with one more line left which is the uh, pink line the reset line the reset line just um, powers this pulse extender here which is a four comparator pulse extender and yeah it interacts again differently this pulse uh, this signal strength memory cell has three inputs like uh, the add input the subtract input and right where is it if we power basically the subtract input for a longer time so yeah it's only two inputs uh, technically if we power the subtract circuit just shortly we subtract one point but if we power it continuously we subtract all the points so let's just add yeah just yeah that should be sufficient to fill the whole board let's fill it to the brim nice um yeah and you can also overshoot if you get another point now it's not 16 it's still 15 of course since that's the limit of signal strength in this case and yeah if we now power the magenta circuit we can see that we depower or we subtract basically all lamps in one go by depowering this torch here not for two ticks like this circuit here on the bottom does the subtract circuit which is powered for like I don't know that uh, fr from my, my head now the ticks but it's like a lot of ticks it's like 50 or so which uh, we can just subtract all the lamps and yeah that's basically how this machine works it's not too complicated to be honest yeah we can get into the complications here with the building part you have to build it in a specific way of course the interaction with the lamps or, or the pistons but other than that i would say it's a pretty nice pretty compact build it's stackable it is great to have a scoreboard and I will see you in a second in the block by block tutorial. So welcome to the block by block tutorial. And this time I just pre-built just a minor section. It is not that much this time, I promise. And yeah, we have just a six wide platform here. It doesn't matter how basically deep you build it, just extend it as you want to increase the view. So yeah, just build it like here, like 15 blocks or just here like, like five blocks or so. But six blocks is your repeating module or re your repeating unit. And for the repeating unit, we actually only need five blocks, as you can see here from the top. The sixth block is just a spacer, but you need the spacer, otherwise it will not work. So six blocks, repeating unit, but five blocks are only used. So um, what we have to do now is just place a frame, and this frame is like two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven blocks high. And we have here this, uh, what is it, eight by two? No, seven by two pattern of uh, redstone lamps and you can pause at any point if you want. And then on top we have the player head or creeper head and another 15th redstone lamp. So here on the bottom, we also have this add and subtract buttons as well as the reset button. And now we just go to the back where we built now in green, this kind of shape here. And we just place repeaters all over the place like so and then we also gonna play he place right here a redstone dust a note block right next to it like pitch whatever you want and a piece of iron beneath so we can have a nicer sound there next so we power basically all second rows now starting from the top so we need to power those 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 and those as well and that's why we're gonna need some more repeaters facing directly into those blocks like this 
and here we don't have any blocks so yeah just skip that we have now one two three four five six seven layers of repeaters so that's where we have seven layers of lamps in the front and the 15th lamp is just on the top it's just powered with this blue circuit here i'm gonna build right here a redstone dust another repeater and another redstone dust another repeater followed by one two three four blocks of blue wool filled with redstone next up we're gonna extend this platform here like so we place here another repeater here two pieces of redstone dust and then we just continue on by placing right here repeater right here repeater here repeater and here two repeaters and here two redstone no that wasn't right and we finish by placing here two redstone dust and here two repeaters so we have three repeaters for each row as you can see here so next up we're gonna repeat this procedure so yeah we can just start here in the middle it's completely repeating now nothing new so two pieces repeater like so here we're gonna need this kind of pattern and then do it just all over again like so like so and last circuit here on top will be a little bit different it's just the outer ones and for the middle we're just gonna place here repeater redstone dust prevented from connecting and redstone dust here repeater there redstone dust here so now we can already place in the other rows of redstone dust like so and here on the top we only need two more like so and we just close this gap with a repeater and a piece of redstone so next up we're gonna grab ourselves some green wool and we just place three repeaters arc comparators right like here then we're gonna place in here a redstone dust there a redstone dust we're gonna face a repeater with uh set to subtraction mode right here two pieces of redstone dust right here then we're gonna go down place a redstone torch another comparator set to subtraction mode here a piece of redstone we go down we place here another piece of redstone then we're gonna place a comparator facing this direction set to subtraction mode and in the opposite direction one block uh, diagonally like so and last but not least we're gonna face a comparator in this direction with a chest and in this chest we just place one single item and right next to this chest we're gonna place here a redstone dust and this block can already be a magenta since it is an input uh, block with a redstone torch attached to it so for this spiral to go upwards we're gonna need a target block then a uh, redstone comparator we go up we're gonna have a signal then a block another comparator another block redstone dust right here a comparator right here and a piece of redstone right here and we're just gonna spiral this up now so another target block another comparator another piece of redstone and you get the idea we have this repeating pattern of just spiraling upwards like this so with this task done we can now place in the blue input it will be right here that's it and we're gonna place in repeater set of two ticks a piston where do i have my pistons here piston and another repeater set two two ticks and then we're gonna place here a self-emptying dropper circuit and those circuits are pretty easy to build actually so we're just gonna have here a comparator uh, comparator a repeater 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 and redstone all the way and now we're gonna place in a dropper right here and a chest 
on top of it, like so. And here a block, so this repeater can power it. And if we place in, for example, yeah, just place like four wool, we can see we have now signal strength four. That's exactly what we want, so just place in another one. And from here on, we're gonna need some hoppers. And here is the first hopper line, here is the second hopper line. Of course, you can do as many as you like and just get some droppers filled with wool to power everything. So those are our two inputs and we can also use some composters to reduce the lag a little bit. So to sum up, if we now get the yellow wool from the top circuit, which is this one here, just get it there and we just need to get into this block here with this kind of circuit. And from here on, I would suggest using all the way repeaters since you can run into issues if you place in a red star at a different point. I will show you why. If you, for example, don't put this repeater here and just have a redstone, it will connect to the next circuit adjacent to this module and it would just mess up the whole s this whole sequence. So just repeaters to the, to the like, all the way to the end. It's a little bit of repeater wasting, I know, but um, yeah, you can remove repeaters later on and it will still work. But if you don't do that and just put in the only necessary ones and you just re replace, misplace them by one block, your machine will not work. And yeah, that's what I want to prevent here. So next we're gonna place in our magenta wool circuit and we're gonna do that right here. So that's the block and we're gonna rotate this block here. I just did a mistake here and yeah, now we already subtracted one lamp, I think. No, we didn't, it w I was fast enough, but we just rotate it. Uh, make sure to start with that. Sorry for the misplacement. Then we're gonna place a repeater set to four ticks. Um, this two by four platform with redstone here, comparators right here and facing in the other direction. And then we're gonna place in here a repeater set to four ticks, redstone dust, and then we just go down with another repeater and yeah, just continue all the way until we end up here right beneath this black button. And now we're gonna place here some redstone until we get to the chest and from there on just repeaters all the way through. Good, the reset circuit also works now, so we can just reset it should clear out all the signal strength. And yeah, just for demonstration purposes, I will just get like another eight of them and let the machine run. And in the meantime, I will install the orange circuit. So we're gonna start right here with the torch afterwards and the second one right here. So I'll just place it right there. So this one should be off, this one here on. And now it's just a two tick uh, repeater. It's a piston in the floor, another two tick repeater right here. And then again, a self emptying dropper, which looks like this. We're gonna again have our chest right here. And, oh, that's not right. So, 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 and redstone. Okay, that's our self emptying mechanism. One input. Second input, reduce the server lag with some composters and some pre, oh no, that was the wrong direction. Some pre-filled droppers facing into the hoppers. They should be able to get us the two inputs. So here with the first input here, of course, we have the second one, which is the automatic one right here. And same goes for the bottom circuit. We have the first input right here which looks like, th no, that's not right. Looks like this. And also here on the top, it's very important to place here a repeater as well. Otherwise we will power this redstone. So, and then we just gonna go with a redstone line to this point. In the meantime, we have here another input at the, at the, at the, the back for resetting it. Um, for subtracting a point and also the reset point can be here the manual one so that's our manual reset point so let's get some buttons uh, the, the crimson buttons are now just for showcasing 
oh no, that was not my intention to lose that button. The crimson buttons are just for showcasing where we have the automated inputs from the back. And those buttons are just the manual ones from the front. So now we have to get the signal down. So that's our second line right here. So we just input again with some repeaters, all the way repeaters until we get to this chest. That's where we need to place a redstone dust. We're gonna block down a redstone torch, redstone dust, redstone torch. And we can also remove that orange wool and replace it with an iron block. Perfect. So that's basically it. And if we now look at the front, we subtracted already one point. We can add points now. We can subtract them. We can add, as I showed you, from the back a point. We can also subtract from the back a point. Let's see if we'll see it. Yeah. And yeah, of course, if we put multiple items in there, I just, yeah, you can't put any item in there, just three blocks of diamond, three more points, but you will spam this chest. It's better to put in one single type of item type. And then the, to the bottom, yeah, what we can do now is like three observers. One, two, three. And if you want to reset it, just press the bottom button and you will clear out the whole machine. So that's it with the block by block tutorial. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to build it with this block version, uh, I showed you before, you have to just, where are my pistons? Where are they? They are not here, here. Uh, if you want to place some blocks, you have to just use them here, just instead of the lamps. Then you can use the blocks, but then you have to get this uh, kind of, what is it called? The frame around just two blocks to the front. Yeah, but you get the idea. It's super easy to swap those lamps for pistons and you can get this design here. But if you're not sure how to build it exactly, there's a world download link in the video description as always, and you can download it and play around with this scoreboard. Yeah, I hope this scoreboard will help a lot of you out there. Um, just some limitations of this version since I didn't uh, include the subtract version here. This version can only add and uh, clear out. So don't be surprised if this one lacks the subtraction circuit. But a subtraction circuit is completely modular and independent. So you can just, yeah, play it there, uh, play, place it there as well. And with that said, thank you for watching so much. Thanks again to all my Patreons and all my subscribers and all the people that comment and like all the time. Really, really appreciate it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.